working more than any other country, by the way, to increase the flow. I mean, it is U.S. aircraft that are dropping these, th this food out of the sky in the last couple of days. Yes, but you, you keep saying, and you said yesterday, the holdup, that the problem is the lack of capacity being delivered on the ground. And that's, that's the Israelis and to some extent the Egyptians, but mostly the Israelis. How is that, and you said it's not acceptable guys, earlier. You're looking at this as a zero-sum game. Like, yes, you are, sir. It's, uh, well, if they're not doing what you want, then cut off the aid so they can't defend themselves. That's not the way we're going to do this. It's not the way we have done this. They have a right to defend themselves. They need the capability. Anyway, let me finish. They need the capabilities to do that. There's, there's aid that's desperately in need. And you know what? We can do that, too. We can do both. Both are important, and both are going to be pursued by this administration. I, don't, I know you don't approve of necessarily the policy choices that we've made, but... But, I'm just questions, but we, and I'm answering them, we can do both. We can influence our Israeli counterparts to do more, to be more careful, to let more aid in, and we can continue to work to get that aid in ourselves. That they're also a key ally and a partner, and we respect that alliance and that partnership as well. The other thing that's keeping the president up at night is the humanitarian assistance and the humanitarian situation on the ground in Gaza, and that's why uh, he has uh, ordered these airdrops. That's why we continue to urge very, very stridently, the Israelis to open up more crossings on the ground to supplement the, to supplement the aid that's already getting in and to try to improve what's not getting in. And that's why, as I said in my opening statement, the president also has the team looking at maritime options.